Hello, and welcome to Agalia Chats. I am Eric Meyer. I'm a developer advocate at Agalia. And I am Brian Cardell. I am also a developer advocate at Agalia. And uh, this week, we're going to do a little wrap-up of a couple of uh, sort of browser-centric or engine-centric uh, gatherings. Uh, BlinkOn, which is a uh, Google gathering for people who work on Blink. And the WebKit Contributors Meeting, which is uh, Apple brings people together who contribute to WebKit, uh, the engine. Um, Agalia was represented there uh, for, uh, at both, and Brian was there personally. So, um, but we're going to talk about, you know, what what was uh, heard there and what we presented and what Brian experienced being at those. So. Brian, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, three trips to California in about 30 days. So <laughs> TPAC, BlinkCon, then WebKit Contributors Meeting. Right. Um, sure would be nice to either spread those out or um, like put them all together so you could just go out there for two weeks yeah. and you know, yeah. save, one of, save the... One of the two, either... Either one, yeah. Put them, put them months apart or one I, right uh, after the other. Anyway. I, I talked to organizers from both i mean i know you know um our listeners don't i guess but we we help a little bit with the organization of these events as well um mm -hmm. so i did mention that it would be really nice um if we could optimize that a little bit i think it would be really cool to have just like a web engines hack fest if you will <laughs> where yeah <laughs> I was going to say, that's a thing that Agalia does uh, each late spring, uh, early summer is yeah. a Web Engines Hack Fest, which is kind of like these gatherings, but it's it's a little more platform agnostic because, I mean, it makes sense that Google would have a gathering about people who contribute to Google's browser engine and Apple would have a gathering for people who contribute to Apple's browser engine. Agalia is just kind of like a, let's get everyone together. Everybody who works on a browser engine, whatever the engine is, come on down. Yeah, I mean, we get a giant venue um, that is, you know, would be able to accommodate, you know, accommodate any and all of these events, really. It's uh -huh. it's very big. Uh -huh. And we, like last year, we had tracks. So, you know, like it would be great if we just had like one event that was maybe like a week long that, um, you know, you can have a, a Blink track and a WebKit track and even a Gecko track, um, maybe a Servo uh, track. Um, I was going to say a Novel Engines track, maybe. Yeah, right. And then, but then there could also be like, a, you know, joint stuff that included even discussions about like architecture of those engines, like comparative mm. discussions. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, I think it would be really cool if we did that and it would be very optimal for people's travels um, unless you happen yeah. to work for one of the companies who means you don't have to travel because you're already there, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I I mean, now, now that you talk about this idea, I mean, it's a really good idea. You can get the interop team literally because interop is mostly browser representatives, not entirely, but mostly. You could have an, uh, an, you know, sort of like a TPAC where working groups have joint meetings. You know, the CSS and accessibility working groups get together to talk about where they overlap. You could have browser engines talking about where they where they overlap, and that could there could be some real interop discussions, like in person. Um, interop has been entirely virtual uh, over the years, as far as I can, as far as I know. So. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm I'm in. I would love to be there for that week. That would be fantastic. I don't remember if there was an in person. There was an in person blink on last year, and I didn't go. And also, I didn't go to WebKit contributors meeting. I think there were just things in my life that prevented me from going. But um, yeah, they were they were good events. Um, we sent seven or eight people to each one, I think, uh -huh. and. Yeah, both of them, they're similar, but different. Like they're, they get together people from the open source project community and they're full of t 
talks, like full length talks and lightning talks and breakout sessions. Uh-huh. The WebKit contributors is like less on the breakout sessions formally, but like there is space and, you know, people just, but there are breaks. So people just talk and, you know, we go right. have a 40 minute break and the intent is for you to go self organize about topics that you want, you know, do yeah. some hacking or discussion or whatever. Uh huh. Yeah. But they're, they're good. You attended them virtually too, right? I did. Um, was, uh, to the extent that, that one can, obviously it was, I was seeing the talks, um, the weather full length or lightning. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there was some, there was some really cool stuff. Some, some of which Agalia was presenting, but yeah. Some of which other people were presenting, you know? So Google, the blink on was this year at a, a Google office. It's quite nice actually. Um, that was in the Bay area somewhere. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how many people I would guess like maybe 150 people in person at BlinkCon. Mm-hmm. And it was representatives from, you know, most of the uh, community, I guess. I mean, but I would say actually this year, Microsoft had maybe half the people. It seemed like were from Microsoft. It was wild. Wow. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't know. I mean, do you want to talk about like the, the talks that were there, like maybe people, I don't, I don't know how interesting all this meta, what's it like <laughs> stuff is um, to people. I, but... You know, I, I think probably not a lot of people realize mm. that these things even happen. Yeah. Right? Like, I suppose if you fought, like if you follow, well, Egalia on social media at our, mm-hmm. at our social media accounts, like Egalia, uh, usually at Agalia. Um, you know, we talk about how we, you know, we're at the, at BlinkCon this year and, you know, this is how many talks we're going to have. So you, you might be aware that those things happen, but I think lots and lots of people, probably many, vis- many listeners to this, um, will maybe not be aware that there are essentially yearly gatherings, at least two yearly gatherings, um, like mm-hmm. this. And yeah, they, they, they can be, they can be very interesting. And, you know, part of it is that we also want to be a little bit careful about what we talk about, because one of the things about this is that about these, excuse me, is that they let various contributors come together and say, you know, this is what we're thinking about working on. Like, these are things we're interested in and you don't want those to sort of get turned into promises (laughs) or people, you know, regarding them as promises when they're not supposed to be, but, you know, like for us, we talked about at blink on, we talked about a bunch of stuff um, that we've done. Mm-hmm. So that that's a little, I mean, it's easier for us to talk about, you know, so it's like um, we had, we had one about uh, our work on ozone Wayland um, mm-hmm. and uh, so we had one on uh, implementing line clamp. Right. Yeah. CSS line clamp. Um, Andrew talked about Mm -hmm. um, the work that they've done. And that was a lightning talk. So they had three minutes. And at BlinkCon, it is, it's three. If you go to three minute and one second, they will cut you off. Yeah. It's fun, Um, actually. Like that sounds terrifying and and terrible. um, But it is like a kind of a game show atmosphere. At least it was in the past. Um, uh, The person who, who ran the lightning talks before didn't run Mm. it this year i think it was just tab ran it but Mm. um yeah it was very kind of game showy in the past and Mm. and actually it was very fun um they would like cut you off and give you like a buzzer sound (laughs) like a "Eh." um they needed a gong from the gong show but anyway yeah but it's i mean it's nice because you can get a lot of different contributors just in three Mm. minutes saying hey this is what i've been working on this is what i ran into this is what i'm thinking about next yeah and then boom next so yeah we you know we talked about um tiago had a had a talk about uh lightning talk about using chrome for building apps as an Mm -hmm. example um and you know stuff like that so we we talked actually about the status of because we worked on uh how do you bring blink to ios right Um, so we we've been working on that 
Mm-hmm. So we, we gave a talk about that, which was kind gave of cool. A, gave a little update. Like, mm-hmm. here's where we are now. Or here's here's what we've been running into recently. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, just all that kind of stuff. And, and these lightning talks or regular talks can be super, super nerdy, like mm-hmm. super deep dive into the, into the, the weeds of, you know, libraries and frameworks and implementing this and dealing with that operating system. And sometimes they can be, you know, more sort of high level. It's like the, this is what we've been working on. And certainly lightning talks don't get too deep into the weeds. They don't have time, but, right. um, you know, uh, they can be a much more high level, um, you know, sort of conceptual. This is where we would like to see things go. Like this is a thing that we're super interested in and having, you know, a deeper support for the sorts of APIs that would make this possible would be useful, not just to us, but to the entire web ecosystem. Like there's room for both kinds of talks. So that's, right. that's always interesting at, at, at both of them. I should, I should say, you know, we're mostly talking about blink on at the moment because it came first on the calendar, but those sorts of, that's all sort of, that's true of both of them. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, you noted like about like what you view as promise or whatever. Um, Mm. There, there is a difference in the philosophy of the, of the two of them a little bit in, in the policies, I guess. So blink on like, we'll actually link the whole thing is on there. Um, you know, sans hallway conversations and stuff like that. <laughs> um, right. But yeah, it's all up there. And um, yeah, some of those things I would say do historically. And I mean, it's not a knock on the event. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, I think some of those things do historically wind up misunderstood or, you know, seeing that they're further along than they are or something. I remember like very distinctly, not at this event, but at a Google IO, uh, back in 2012 or 2014, um, there was stuff about like web components and it was like all this stuff, like a bunch of it that like model driven views, (laughs) which is like templating, um, Mm, which uh clearly we don't, we do not have, you know, (laughs) Right. Um, and I remember myself and a few other people were like, people just think that that's a thing now. And it, it's not. And it like it it probably isn't going to be in the near future. Maybe not ever, because like a, a lot of things don't really finally see the light of day. I mean, uh, it's interesting. You know, Google spends a lot of money um, and a lot of it is effectively R&D for the web. Right. I mean, it's somebody has to do it. You know, somebody has to make the proposals and run into the brick walls and find out what works, what's plausible, what, right. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but it, it's interesting. And in the web kick intruders meeting, you, you can post your own talks. Uh-huh. I guess we didn't record our talks this year, but maybe we can see if some of our colleagues will record them because we that's an oversight on our part we we have not thought about it because of the past few it's been hybrid so we presented them on a recording <laughs> uh, so we just right. had the recording we could post it but in 2019 i think i did it and that's on our youtube channel i did it um yeah that too i didn't do in person actually this is my first webkit contributors meeting in person was this year oh cool yeah i'm, I'm hoping to make it one year it just schedule wise did not work for me this year yeah. Um, unfortunately, neither of them did, um, and they did work for you. Yeah, I so it, and at BlinkCon, some of the ones, some of the in, interesting talks. Uh, you know, we've got a um, a list here about some of them. Uh, one of them was uh, about uh, the trials and tribulations of trying to implement masonry layout, so CSS mm. masonry, and talking about sort of the, you know here's what masonry is when you sort of get a little more into it (laughs) and it's, it's weird. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exactly fit into any of the existing CSS layout models, but it kind of fits into a couple of them. Um, Yeah. Like I thought that was really interesting. Um, There was a presentation about the baseline initiative Mm -hmm. um, from uh, that was uh, Kinnear did that one, right? Yeah, basically talking about here's here's what baseline is has done and is intending to do. 
Um, I'm curious, how did the Q and a come across online? Like, because were you able to hear the questions and stuff in the room? A lot of times. No. Okay. Um, so, uh, speakers who took Q and a and who repeated the questions were very much appreciated. Yeah. I mean, we had a mic, we were walking around with a mic, but I'm never quite confident if they're routed properly (laughs) to get into the same feed. Right. Um, I mean, a lot of them were, uh, don't get me wrong, but there were, there were a couple where it was like, boy, I really hope they repeat that question. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, I think there was some interesting conversation around baseline. I want to go back and watch the video and see if I can hear because, Mm -hmm. um, I think there was, there were some interesting ideas at the end of it. I think, um, there was one on customizable select that was interesting. Um, and there was one on uh, sharing styles with declarative shadow DOM. That was Kurt Caddy Schmidt uh, from yep. Microsoft. Uh-huh. And it focused a lot on Microsoft's CSS imports. But they also talk about the other ideas like using at layer or at uh, style. The stuff like we talked about when Mia was on the show. Uh-huh. So uh, my favorite talk was uh, Chris Wilson's talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's funny because I ran into him like I, I went to get some coffee and I don't know which one I missed, but I missed there was there was like a talk. A lot of the talks, we should say a lot of the talks are like way lower level because they're about people right. who are working on the engine. Yep. And so there's stuff about, I mean, you know, stuff is way over my head. And so like a couple of sessions like I went and got coffee and just had hallway conversations with people. I, I went out and I ran into Chris and we were having this conversation because um, uh, I had talked to somebody from uh, Microsoft. I met somebody new at Microsoft. I, I, you know, when I'm at these events, I, sometimes I see somebody, I don't know them. I introduce myself so that you get to know more people. Right. I mean, that's the point of yeah. these events, right? Uh huh. Um, so it was like a young guy and I think he was at Microsoft and he was talking about like how, um, man, the standard stuff, it takes so long. It's like, I've been working on it for like a year. (laughs) (laughs) I was like a year. I'm working on things that were from like the late nineties and they're still not done. So he was like the late nineties. I wasn't even born yet. (laughs) Uh, I know. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I'm old, I guess. Uh, but I was talking to Chris and we're, you know, talking about like, yeah, it does. It takes a long time. And we're talking about, you know, some of the things that we've worked on that are, you know, very few things fall into that category, but there are the really hard things like has math, Mel, SVG, you know, Uh um, that have truly been going on since like the beginning of the web. And we're, you know, continue to make progress on them very, 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 very slowly. And then, you know, sometimes we get this breakthrough like has and we get a shift or MathML. We got the last MathML implementation shipped in a form, you know. Um, But yeah, anyway, Chris and I spent a lot of time talking out there and he actually ended up incorporating some of that into his presentation. But even without that, I really... Chris was, was my favorite. He had some really good quotes in there that I thought were, I like I tweeted about them or tutored about them or yeah. skeeted about them. <laughs> probably all of the above. Um, where he said this, uh, Chrome is the fourth browser I worked on. And right. at every point those browsers were the dominant engine, you know, like they uh-huh. have, were pronounced by someone as the winner, you know, like not everyone, but you know, like people in industry were like, well, you know, let's just adopt that. That's the winner, you know, like yeah. that's, um, yeah. And I mean, none had, of them exist anymore. Right. Netscape like the Navigator companies had, that make them don't exist anymore. Right. I mean, Netscape Navigator had 97% of the browser market at one point, internet Explorer, which he also worked on had 95% of the browser market. And while that, Microsoft certainly still exists. Internet Explorer, well, doesn't exist. In, in effect, there's Microsoft Edge now, and it 
does not have 95% of the browser market. Um, yeah. And uh, the line, uh, hopefully I don't mangle it, but you know, the line that he had that I think a few people quoted was, you know, the web outlasts browsers. It outlasts companies. It outlasts industries. Right. That's right. It's amazing. Right. I mean, that's, um... it really is. I I've written about that like so many times because it's um we had a a friend of mine who was like really advanced in the industry you know he was probably my age when I worked with him when I was getting started you know okay. and um like my age now I'm saying you know he was seasoned veteran he came and talked to one of my college engineering courses and he has said um hey if there's one thing i can instill on you um stuff changes <laughs> like everything that you think is going to be forever it's probably not if it's attached to like a company yeah or even maybe a programming language, if that's like not an open programming language or something, you know, like uh -huh. paradigms change and, you know, like big giant tech companies or, um, you know, things just change. I mean, cassettes, records, <laughs> you know, like uh, whole paradigms change all the time. And it's slow and you don't notice it, but it's important to keep in mind that the world outside of your current thing is not stable. It's going to continue to change and evolve. I think that's like super important for a lot of the discussions that we have because, you know, we talk all the time about how the web is currently funded. Uh -huh. That won't last forever. Like it can't. I don't want it to last forever anyway, because it's like not a very good way to do it. <laughs> but yeah, like it's it's important to keep in mind. I think. Yeah. Um, so it was great. It was great to hear you know somebody like Chris articulate that in, in that stage, especially because you know he was. I think he even said like the web will outlast Google. You know. Right. Probably. I mean, probably. <laughs> Or it will at least outlast the position Google has with respect to the web. You know, right. the web has has not yet outlasted Microsoft, but Microsoft Microsoft's role in the web and how you know that sort of thing has certainly changed a lot. Um, and that is likely to be the same for Google or Apple, for that matter. You know, we we yeah we often think, wow, these tech titans are now permanent fixtures of the landscape. It's like, mm, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. So right there at yeah, the top and, with blockbuster video, you know, right, exactly. But uh, speaking of Apple, the WebKit contributors meeting, we wait before we go to the WebKit oh. contributors meeting, there's two things that I want to say about blink on uh, before we wrap up one that dovetails really nicely into the collective. Um, so Shruti oh, gave an update yeah. on this. I don't know if we talked about this before, but uh -uh. Uh, they haven't sort of formally announced it unless it happened in the last week and I, and I just missed it. But, you know, this is, it's public now. Um, and right. they are creating a Chromium Collective um, where um, they're getting people downstream from Chromium who use Chromium and rely on Chromium who aren't Google to pay into a common pot uh -huh. that will then be used to fund development from companies like Agalia and sort of independent prioritization to some degree uh, right. of the work in Chromium, you know? So to, to widen who is contributing and funding, uh -huh. Anyway, it's a neat idea. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, so, I don't know how I mean, it will affect us, but... Um, right. So, I mean, the idea is that, for example, Microsoft and Opera both use Chromium. Yes. Just to pick two examples. They're not the only mm -hmm. ones. Um, and so they... they I are do believe, though, that they are 
among are, the ones that they announced. <laughs> yes, they are. Uh, so they are contributing money to this collective. They're effectively paying back for being able to use this browser engine in their project products mm -hmm. and their projects. And the idea is that anyone who does that, um, you know, anyone who uses Chromium uh, as the core of a product uh, will contribute to this collective, which is uh, housed at the Linux Foundation and yeah. will be administered by the Linux Foundation and will have like a, a I don't know if these will be the actual terms, but like a steering committee, a governing committee that will, you know, that will determine, okay, we need this done and we're going to hire this independent contractor, this sole programmer, this company like Agalia yep. to implement it. And um, we will give, we will pay them out of this collective, out of this pool of money. That is correct. X amount of, you know, whatever amount of dollars. If it's a, you know, it's a, if it's a small project, it might be, you know, a few thousands or thousand or tens of thousands of dollars. If it's a huge project, it could be a multi-year, possibly six or seven figure contract. You know, who knows? That right. is for that steering and governing committee to decide. And that, like I say, is administered by the Linux Foundation right. is the idea. And that's right. Again, there hasn't been a formal announcement, but through these talk, I believe is or will be on YouTube. So people can yeah. see that. We'll link to it. Well, we'll link to the blink on playlist. The, yeah. The blink on 19 playlist and you, people can look it up there. Yeah. That was really cool. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it's, I love that we're experimenting with this. So we mm -hmm. did almost uh, a very similar, we tried to do a very similar thing with Wolvik, which is a show that we'll <laughs> be doing soon. Um, yep. uh, but we try to do a similar thing with Wolvik and a servo kind of works in a similar ish way where you can put money to the servo collective and it is the technical steering committee that, um, has to decide how to allocate those funds. Yep. Um, and that's all part of the Linux Foundation. It's very similar to that in a way. Um, except that in this incarnation, there was like a, the way that you get onto the board of this is to put money into the pot in the first place, which which is actually just like the way we did it for Wolvik, but more technical. Um, anyway, right. it's really interesting. I, I like to see it uh, being experimented with. To keep it in perspective, it is, you know, point one percent or point oh one percent of the money it costs to maintain but blink it's not like a, a an immediate paradigm shift or anything but right you know having actual money from downstream as a practice would be great it would be great yeah. if all of the you know downstream if that was the norm yeah anyway uh -huh. um so the other thing I wanted to mention is that, uh, like I said, Microsoft had a really big presence there. One of the things that happens in that meeting is uh, some keynotes, and they kind of summarize the state of the community. And, you know, they do lots of things to measure it. They have lots of ways we measure in terms of like commits and reviewers and all that kind of stuff. And um, this year is the first year that Microsoft surpassed Agalia on those. On, uh, on what? Sorry. You on like it. commits. And, okay. So uh, number of commits to Chromium. Mm -hmm, yeah. So congratulations, Microsoft. Well uh, done. For now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we'll see. I mean, I, I'm I'm really happy that they are because, you know, they went to Chromium and then like very much slowed down, you know, like a lot. And um, it is really nice to see actually them mm -hmm. stepping up and doing like they are doing a lot now. So it's great. Yeah. Awesome. Let's talk about WebKit contributors meeting. The WebKit contributors meeting. Yeah. Um, you, you noted that this one's been going for longer. Yeah, because it predates uh, Blink, right? The Blink was WebKit. Mm. And so all the Google people would go there 
Um, so it's been going on for a long time, actually. And um, the the guy who started it actually was there. John pointed him out to me, but I didn't get to meet him. But John mm-hmm. mentioned to me, like, you know, at some point I just like inherited this and like I hadn't been here before. So like, I'm not sure if it's much different than it was before that. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. I wonder I wonder what it was like. We should talk. We should ask some of our people because like, you know, we work with people who have been working on WebKit for, you know, more than a decade. Uh, so they would they would know maybe right. a decade and a half. Um, well, no, I mean, Rob Baus and Nicholas Zimmerman, uh, technically, they wrote the SVG engine in the late 90s. So um there you go that's that's uh coming up on a quarter century here that's uh the og yeah seriously OG contributors yeah so um how big was this one like how many people this one was at the the hyatt hilton which i'm sure everybody has made the joke but i was like it it's called hyatt house and i was like is it david hyatt's house <laughs> yeah yeah. Only the olds will get that one, I guess. Right. Maybe do we need to explain it? Dave Hyatt just he was a browser engineer really early on and worked at Apple for a while. Yeah. Uh so yeah, it was good. Um Mario uh from Agalia gave our uh talk. So basically um this one is organized a little bit differently. We don't do quite the same thing that we do at blink on but uh, every port like webkit has ports so there's the safari port okay then there's well there's two safari ports i guess there's ios and mac os and then there's uh our embedded port and there's the w that's wpe and then there's the gtk port for linux desktop right and then there's a Sony port, mm-hmm. um, which runs and... PlayStation Four, Five. Yes. Yeah. And then there, there are some other not quite ports, um, but uh, interested parties. But the the major contributors um, who have ports, they give a kind of a, a state of our ports, and also mm-hmm. typically those have a you know a team around them they're not just like an individual contributor or two right so they give a this is what we're interested in as well in the next year um Mm -hmm. like this is what we'd like to work on what we're hoping to work on right this is where like you say we try to be real careful about it's not a promise (laughs) it's a it's a hey if you too are interested in these like let's talk or um Mm -hmm. you know because maybe i should just get out of the way and let you do it or maybe we can work on it together or whatever. Or, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, I thought it was good. Mario's presentation. Uh, uh, the, on the status of our WebKit contributions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We're still number two uh, in <laughs> WebKit. Be, behind Commit. Apple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Um, by, a, by a lot too. I mean, it's, it's, big like webkit is very different than blink in that in in, in blink like 98.9 percent of the commits or some some like very very high over 98 it might be over 99 percent of commits come from googlers and the whole rest of the world put together contributes the remaining like one or one and a half percent but in the WebKit code base, we contribute something like 15 or 16% of the overall contributions. Yes. And if you look at outside of Apple, we contribute like 65 or percent of commits or something like that. So we, we have huge, you know, contributions to, to WebKit. Right. I guess that part of that comes with maintaining ports though too. So Right, yeah. I mean, because these are being ported to other platforms, there's probably gonna be a lot of commits around those. That that's right. fair. And you know, we talked about uh we uh Lauro had a web driver by die. 
Oh, that's oh. that's good. Can we talk about web, dra- web driver by die for a minute? Because um, by die, mm-hmm. if you follow CSS, mm-hmm. totally different thing. Yes, right. In CSS, it's bidirectionality. Here, it is bidirectionality. <laughs> and yet, <laughs> totally different. It, so it's bidirectionality of communication, not bidirectionality of writing mode or something like that, right? Like, right. Yeah. Um, it's not about layout. It's about communication. So, yeah, yeah it's unfortunate uh, that if you are like, if you're somebody who's interested in the web and might run into that, it probably will confuse you. But some people suggested like, well, we should change that. And it's like, well, there's no point in changing it really, because that is really what it is. Mm-hmm. And it's just adding bidirectionality to web driver and so when it's done we won't talk about web driver by die it's not a special thing it will just be web driver right <laughs> right so it's adding bidirectionality to web driver yeah anyway this yeah. is a good talk yeah yeah and uh our other sort of extended talk was uh about skia integration in web kit linux ports so Ski is a rendering library? Yeah, well, it's like a 2D graphics library. And um, it's uh, there's a lot of 2D graphics work that goes into the web. And so it's the foundation of a lot of a lot of the the things that draw, basically. <laughs> uh, especially canvas and all that kind of stuff too. Um, so yeah, it's I guess it's the library because um other than uh apple's ports which use a thing called core graphics i think um we were the only ones who weren't using it uh we used a thing called cairo that was another 2d graphics library um but it was uh unmaintained but everybody uses skia is the interesting thing um like microsoft uses it mozilla uses it uh, you know, Google uses it. Uh, so we were, we were the last ones. It's hard to make a 2D rendering thing that is very performant that you can, that works on the web, works on all devices, work, you know what I mean? Like, right. M- lots of companies contribute to. So um, anyway, we, our ports used for a long time, Cairo, which is another library mm-hmm. like this. Yep. But it, was like not really maintained for a long time and it had some nice things to it, but also it caused us a lot of headaches. Um, and we had been working on potentially our own solution to this, like our own graphics thing. Cause mm-hmm. we have a lot of graphics expertise inside. Yeah. And we actually, the initial work we did was really amazing. Like even some of it outperformed Skia. Um, but the job is too big, you know, like it just wasn't gonna, yeah, wasn't gonna happen really. And, um, we ran into some other problems and so we decided to also benchmark, uh, Skia, like to try to try to measure how it worked out for us. And, um, turns out the answer is really well, it seems. (laughs) So yeah, I mean, it was good. It's a good talk. Um, I hope that we do actually record it and post it because it's it's very interesting i thought right yeah cool and then we there were some lightning talks they're a little longer at uh webkit contributors meeting lightning mm-hmm. talks are five to ten minutes and they don't have that three minute guillotine yeah. cut off but, and they'll uh, let you go on if you go on long uh, okay um but these were things like uh i uh justin uh from Magalia had a couple of uh, lightning talks. One was about uh, new WASM features, new web assembly features. Mm-hmm. And the other was about uh, binary exploitation of the JavaScript core. So that's always fun. Yeah. So three of our talks were uh, by Justin, who used to be at uh, Apple, but now works here. He actually, one of them, he was talking about this uh, binary exploitation thing that you were talking about. Mm-hmm. And, um, he like made a uh he like made a program that you could 
sort of like corrupt just easily and like to demonstrate. And it was like, Hey, let's make this like audience participatory kind of thing. And he like invited like his talk needed somebody to come up and volunteer. And I think everybody was like very few people there were like compilers people probably. So I don't know. Okay. Like I was like, there's no universe in which I'm uh, volunteering for this, you know? Um, and uh, Mache from Apple actually was like, well, I mean, if you don't need to have special knowledge or whatever, I'll, I'll do it. And well, I mean, wow, what a sport. Like he got up there and like, you know, like struggle with it, but figured it out. And yeah, it was cool. I don't think that we, we just kind of let this play out, but there were two talks right after one another. Another one was from Apple's people that was like on similar topics. Um, so we had like this really nice deep dive into the, the ways that these things can go wrong. And it's, uh, it's amazing actually. <laughs> um, so it was interesting. Yeah. It's very cool stuff. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's, again, that's kind of the point of these meetings, these conclaves summits, uh, that's that's the point of getting everyone together is for someone to say, hey, by the way, I found this, you know, amazing, concerning, whatever it is, thing in this engine that we all work on. And I think the rest of you might want to know about it. And it, the reason you get everyone together is that, sure, you could send that as an email, but it's easy to read an email and sort of forget or never read the email in the first place because we right. all have way too much email. Whereas if you're sitting in a room and someone is showing you like literally on slides or whatever, or, or live coding or whatever, check this out. That sticks a lot more. Um, so, yeah. There was a representative there from uh, NVIDIA and okay. he was talking about uh, gaming on the web. And they have uh, some stuff that they were kind of like showing off. It's not announced yet. I can't talk about it too much, but it's like very cool. Um, yeah, it's very cool. Uh, and he also had some, uh, what are the X-Real glasses, which I had never tried. Um, okay. Also very cool, actually. Yeah, uh, how were those? Talk to them about Wolvik. What's that? How were those? Yeah, they're kind of neat. I mean, they're, they're not... Uh, they're just sort of the contrast was really good. I was like really surprised. Um, I thought it would not be because they're so small, but they're tethered. So they're just really, um, it's kind of screen mirroring, you know, but yeah, it was, it was, they were, it was neat anyway. Um, mm -hmm. and I guess the other advantage to that is it's like private. Nobody can see it except for you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think we've talked about like the use cases for, for some of these things is great. If you're like on an airplane or something, you know, um yeah uh so yeah that was that was neat um and then uh also uh yoav from shopify former googler yoav vice uh was mm -hmm. at uh this on behalf of shopify and uh talking about like what they're interested in what they would like to do um uh unfortunately it's not recorded so you you can't hear Yo, I've verbally respond to the look on my face of disbelief at something that he said. <laughs> um, I don't think that's ever happened to me before where like I've been in the audience and like somebody caught my so shocked look that they responded to it. Uh, he was talking about the way that uh, the people use import maps and um, saying that there are people with like thousands and thousands of entries in their import maps and i was like what that seems like really a lot mm. um mm -hmm. but uh yeah it was it was interesting we went out there's you know as always there's like a lot of these events we always say is like the valuable part is you know meeting people having you know relationships with them and you know, the ability to have conversations outside the context of a meeting where it seems like it's like I am trying to do my job and you're not paying enough attention. You're 
getting in the way. It seems like you're, do you know what I mean? Like it can get really tense because everybody is goes to meetings to try to push their things forward, you know, and it can feel like people aren't giving your things enough attention. They're not getting the implementation priority They're, you know, and it, when it's all virtual and people are trying to make the most of their time, it can really feel like maybe people are not so friendly toward you or anything, but then, you know, being right. able to see them and have a meal with them. And I think it's just helpful. It's just helpful. And it opens the door for like a lot of conversations also that wouldn't happen, you know, where it's like, right. yeah, I had this wild idea about this. And what do you think about this? Um, What's the likelihood do you think that we could do such and such? I think I always see really positive things come out of these events. So, yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. And, you know, really glad that they happen every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I think it would be nice if they happen more often. And then I think about that's a lot of travel for everybody. So once a year is probably about right. But yeah. Yeah, I still I'm still kind of jazzed about your idea of just having them all in one place. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that we'll be able to convince everybody to do that. No, probably um, not. But uh, one thing about the WebKit contributors meeting that I really like is that it is like you said, it is like you can't watch Apple's presentation anywhere. Right. So it's easier to communicate in that kind of environment where you say like, look. We're trying to do the best we can to be as open as we can. And we don't like you all work with us. You have shown your commitment. You work on WebKit as well. So it's like it's in everybody's interest to be as communicative as we can. And this this is like what we can tell you. But always understand that like none of these things are promises. Apple doesn't comment on upcoming releases, you know, like, yeah, 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 but you know what I mean? Like very, the most open communication yeah. that I find happens there in that. And, um, one thing I really liked about this is Mache every year. Who's been on WebKit forever. He was on the tag. Like he's been around the web for forever. He gives the, you know, like the state of our things. And then what we're going to be interested in next year for Apple. And he shared this year, uh, at the end, it's like, you know, these are all the areas that we're talking about, like focusing on, you know, and then at the end, there's this sort of like donut pie thing. That's like, here are the slices of our engineering resources, you know, mm -hmm. that we'll dedicate to each one of those things. And like, when you see the presentation, you're like, man, that's a lot of stuff, but also there's a lot of stuff there, there's a way bigger group of stuff that's not on that list. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Um, and when you see the pie at the end, you're like, yeah, this is, we need, we need a lot more pies. Like we <laughs> just need a lot more pies. <laughs> um, so, and I, I like, that's not a commentary on Apple. It's just like when you right. see it, you know, like you gave yeah. that great talk that was like, you know, about how like it, no matter how much money you spend on this, like you will need more money, you know, like, yeah, there, there's, there's always, it doesn't matter. Google could do the same thing at blink on where they say, here's what we're thinking about doing in next year. And it would be this, like you say, sort of a pie chart of here's how much of our resources we're going to dedicate to each of these things. Absolutely. You would say we need more pie. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, it's not a bad way to live your life, but uh, at any rate, yeah, it's no matter no matter how much you do, you could literally have both Apple and Google decide that they were going to dedicate ninety percent of their operating revenue to expanding their browsers feature lists, and there would still be stuff that would not make the list. It's, Probably. Yeah, because yeah, there's just so much. The web has become so ubiquitous and therefore so desirable to make even more ubiquitous, as it were, um, and more powerful that there's always going to be something, you know, it's the, we've, we've managed to put a thousand things on the list that we're going to get done in the next two years. And, you know, somebody really wanted number 1001. 
right? Yeah. Or, I mean, this is several somebody's. So we're uh, in the process of doing interop now and Mm -hmm. uh, you know, interop 2025 is, you know, the process is going where we will pick, you know, a lot of things to not choose to be on the priority list. Yeah. We have, well, or yeah. And, and also like choosing to prioritize something is choosing not also to choosing to not prioritize the other things, other you know? Things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are some things that will be picked just to like explicitly picked to not be on the list because they're not ready for, you know, or whatever. Like last year we didn't include masonry because the spec wasn't done. So we explicitly right. picked that will not go on the list because like, it's not ready for interop. Right. And then there will be things like that this year. And then there will also be, yeah. Once we finally pick the things that go on the list, all the things that were, not picked to go on the list are not on the list. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, exactly. And there will be, uh, the last I checked, we had well over a hundred proposals and yeah. we're not, we're not doing well over a hundred. No, we're not. You know, if we're lucky, I think it would we, be safe to say we're not doing most of them. Yeah. Well, I would say if we're lucky, we'll get to do about 10% of them. Like, depending. It's And yeah, we're not going to, we're not, there's, there's not enough pie, you know, like there isn't, I feel that this is a fundamental problem with the world that there's just not enough pie. It is. I, uh, I gave a talk in 2019 or 2020 that was, uh, used this pie metaphor. <laughs> it always makes me hungry. Yes. Okay. Well, let's, uh, both go get pie. Okay. All right. Brian, thanks. Thanks, Eric.